Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question construct binary tree from pre-order and in-order traversal. So in this question we're going to be given two integer arrays called pre-order and in-order where pre-order is the pre-order traversal of a binary tree and in-order likewise is the in-order traversal of the binary tree. So now we're going to be given these two traversals and what we need to do is we want to construct and return the binary tree that these two traversals represent. So let's actually first go over what these two traversals are and understanding what they are will help us solve the question. So let's just uh, look at the same example of 3, 9, 20, 15, and 7. So in this case, I just wrote it down. And the two traversals that we have are pre-order and in-order. And there's another type called uh, post-order, but we don't care about that for this question. So let's start off with pre-order. So in pre-order, the way it works is that we first consider the root, then we consider the left subtree or the left set of elements, and I'll go over what that actually is, and then we consider everything on the right, so the right subtree. And for in order, the uh, pattern is first we go to the left subtree, then we go to the root, and then we go to the right subtree. So what does this actually mean? And how exactly do we uh, do this traversal on the sample tree that we have over here? So let's just do that one by one and it should be really clear and it should also make it a lot easier to understand how to solve the question. So let's start off with our pre-order traversal. So the pre-order traversal, we start off, or for both the traversals actually, we're gonna start off at the very top. So we're gonna start off at three. Now the first thing we do is we need to account for the root. And the way we do that is by just uh, writing the va value 3. So currently we're taking care of the node or the root, which is the value 3. Then we go to the left of 3. And what that tells us is that we want to account for the entire left subtree of 3. And in this case, this includes all of this over here, but over here is just one value. So now we're at the node 9. The first thing we need to do is we need to account for the root. So 9 is the root and we account for that. So now we have nine. And then we need to look at whatever is at the left of nine. But in this case, there's nothing on the left, so we leave it as it is. And the same way, then we go to the right of nine, that's also empty, so we leave it as it is. So now what this tells us is that we're done accounting for everything in the left of three. So now we go to, we, we're done with the root, we're done with everything to the left, and now we need to look at everything to the right of three, right? So root, left, right. So the way we do that is now we go to 20. Now at 20, we do the same steps. We first account for the root, which is 20 itself. Then we go to the left of it. So left of 20, which includes this. So now we go to 15. And now we need to account for 15 since that's the root. And then at 15, we go to the left subtree, doesn't exist. And right subtree doesn't exist, so we leave it as it is. Now we're done with the left subtree of 20. So we go to the right subtree of 20, which is this over here. So we go to seven, we account for seven, then we account for the left of seven, which is empty, and right of seven, which is empty, so it is uh, as it is. So now this is gonna be our entire traversal for pre-order. So it has three, nine, 20, 15, and seven. Okay, now let's go on with a in-order traversal, and I'll use the color green. So in this case, the, uh, the rules are gonna be different. We first go left, then we go root and then we go right. Again, we're going to start off at three as usual and at the, or the root node, so which in this case is three. And before we actually account for three, we need to account for everything to the left of it. So in this case, that's going to be nine. So currently we're at nine. And before accounting for nine, we go to the left of nine, which is empty. So we leave it as it is. Then we account for the root itself, which is nine. And then we account for everything to the right of nine, which is empty. So we're done. And by this, it tells us that we're done by accounting for everything to the left of three. And now we account for three itself. So we're done with left, and now we go to three, which is the root, perfect. Now we do everything to the right of three, which is the subtree. So currently first we have the value 20, we're currently on 20. And before we uh, go to 20, we need to go to the left of it. So the left subtree includes this, and currently we're on 15. And at 15, before accounting for it, we go to the left, where, but there's nothing, so we leave it as it is. Then we account for the root, which is 15 itself. And then we go to the right of 15, which in this case is also empty. 
So that means we got everything to the left of 20. Now we account for 20 itself. Then we go to the right of 20. So currently we're at seven. Uh, before accounting for seven, we go to the left of seven, which uh, doesn't have anything. So then we go to the root, which is seven itself. And the right of seven also does not have anything. So this over here is going to be our two traversals. And this is what we're gonna be given in the question, the pre-order and the in-order traversal. Now using these two, how can we actually construct this binary tree that we have on the left? In in order, a pattern that you should recognize is that everything is kind of segmented in the order of left, root, and right, obviously, right? So in the beginning, this is how we're gonna start. We wanna get what is the root of this tree? And the way we get that is what is the first element in the pre-order traversal? And in that case, in this case, this is the value three. And that's all we care about. So that, so that tells us uh, directly that, okay, we got the root of our tree over here, which is three. Now, how do we know what falls in its left and right subtree? So we know it's gonna have something, right? Uh, either it might have a value of none or something else would be there. And we wanna find out what is gonna be in the left and right subtree. How do we do that? So to do that, what we need to do is we need to look for this node inside of the in order traversal. And in this case, the three is over here, right? And what this tells us is that three is the root and everything to the left of it in the in order traversal is going to be part of the left subtree. So the left subtree over here is going to be part, uh, is gonna have the value nine for a fact, right? We don't know where, but it is going to have the value nine. And the same way, the right subtree is going to have all of these values. So 15, 20, and seven. So let's just write it down on the side. 15, 20, and seven. Perfect. So this over here kind of tells us how we can kind of break apart our question into smaller parts. So in this case, in the beginning, we're considering all of this, all the, the entire in order list and the entire pre order list. Now, how do we get, how do we know what is the root in this case? So let's start off with the left. So, and the reason we start off with left is because in the pre-order, we have root, left, and right, okay? That's the only reason we go left first. So in this case, what's gonna happen is uh, the left value, the value that we have here, so first we went to the zeroth index, now we're at the first index, and that has a value of nine. So that tells us that this nine over here is supposed to be the root of the left subtree of three. So the nine is going to get placed over here. So let me just get rid of this, and we have nine over here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we have 15, 20, and seven. So with these values, how do we know what is the root over here and what is the left and right subtree of that? So the same thing applies. So currently we had nine earlier, and now we look at what is the next value over here. So at the second index, we have the value 20, and that tells us that that is the root over here. So 20 is the root over here. So let me just write it down, so 20. And now we wanna see what goes to the left and right of 20. So we're gonna have left and right, and how do we know what this is? So in this case, we go to 20 in the in order list. Everything to the left of it is gonna be part of the left subtree. So you might think that's nine, three, and 15, but one way to look at it is we've already accounted for the nine and the three, so we don't care about that anymore. So in this case, it's just the 15 and seven for everything to the right. So 15 for everything on the left and seven for everything on the right. Okay, perfect. So in this case, uh, it's pretty obvious since there's only one value and we can just get to that using this over here. So first we have 15. So on the left, we have the node 15 over here. And then finally for the right, we have the node seven, okay? So this is kind of how the question is broken down. And one thing you wanna realize is we can actually break this down or look at it as a recursive question. And let me just kind of, uh, kind of explain to you how that is done. So each time our goal is going to be to look at a different part of the in-order and post-order traversal. Uh, let me just write this down so it's more clear. So this over here was nine and this over here is three. Okay, so let me just get rid of all of this. So in the beginning, uh, which is over here at three, for our pre-order traversal, we considered the entire list and we did the same for our in-order traversal as well. We considered this entire list as well. Now what happened is we broke it down into two parts, left and right, right? So we had three and everything to the left of it was the left subtree and then we had the right subtree with 15, 20, and seven. So when we go to the right subtree, we're only gonna consider, so currently we were at the number three. So you can kind of think of that, uh, think of that as a pivot point, right? 
and this over here is at the index of one. Okay, I'm just gonna write it down and I'll show you why that matters. So in this case, uh, everything to the right is everything from the index one, uh, current mid index. So you can just think of it as one plus one. So starting from the index two in this case, all the way up to the ending, okay? So this is what goes to the right, okay? The right part of it. Now for the left part, it's gonna be everything from the beginning so from the zeroth index up to the mid index. So up to the value three, not including the value three itself. So everything up to index one, and that just includes the value nine. So this is gonna be part of the left index. So for the left part over here, we're only gonna consider nine for the in order traversal. And for the right part over here, we're gonna consider 15, 20, and seven for the in order traversal. Okay, now let's see how does the pre-order traversal break down for the same thing. Okay, so in the beginning we had three, right? We already decided how we find the first route, which is by getting the zero index. So now the thing is, what happens when we move to the right? So that means we want to consider the right subtree. So when we're considering the right subtree, in this case, that would be 15, 20, and seven. So what are the values of the pre-order list that we actually need to consider? So just to show you, that would just be the values 20, 15, and seven, uh, right? But how exactly do we get that? So the way we get that is over here, we kind of have a mid value, right? Oh, this is just for the first instance, which we found out is at the index one, okay? So at the index one, the mid value was three, right? You can kind of think of it as a pivot point. And over here, we have the index one. So every, so the pre-order traversal for the right is going to be everything from mid plus one, so from the index two, all the way up to the ending. And that makes sense, right? 20, 15, and seven are all considered in the right part of three, right? So that's what goes for the pre-order traversal when going to the right. Now, when we go to the left, what exactly is considered? So in this case, we're only gonna consider everything from the beginning up to and including whatever the mid index is. So in this case, that would be everything uh, starting from the beginning. So that would be three. And we're gonna go up to and including the index one. So that would be three and nine, but that's actually not correct, right? So three should not be accounted for because the, we already know what the main route is. We already know that three is the route, uh, the route, sorry. So we don't want to account for the three. And the way we do that is we're always going to, we're gonna have a value of one. So we're only gonna look at everything from the first index onwards up to mid plus one. So in this case, what is that gonna be? So we're gonna start off at the first index and we're gonna go all the way up to one plus one, which is two. And in simple words, that's just this value. So when we go to the left, we're only considering this value of nine. So this is how we're gonna recursively build on our tree. And I think it is a lot more clear in code. So hopefully you can understand how this is a recursive problem. And each time we're just breaking it down uh, into smaller parts. So first time the mid value was over here at the index one. Now the second time when we move to the right subtree, the mid value is going to be at 20. And that's at the index one, two, sorry, zero, one, two, three. So that's at the index three. And we do the same steps recursively. So let me just show you what that looks like in code, which I think is a lot easier to understand. Okay, all right, so let's see how we can actually build up this recursive solution. So let's just start off with a little simpler part, and I'm just gonna keep referring back to the drawings that I showed earlier. Now, the first thing is we wanna find the root, okay? And just think of it as the first iteration. I think that's a lot easier to look at it. So basically, we wanna find the three. And how exactly do we get that? And the way we get that is by just getting whatever is at the zeroth index of the current pre-order list that we're working with. Okay, so let's get the root. And the root is going to have a value of pre-order and whatever is at the zeroth index. Now we wanna construct a binary tree out of this. And the way we do that is that there's a class over here defined for us and we wanna give it this value over here, okay? So let's create a object of the tree node class and again, the class is defined for us above, and this is the value of it. And we don't know what's gonna be on the left of, uh, or right of it yet, but we're gonna build onto that, perfect. So we have the root and its value defined over here. Now the next part is we found the three, okay? So we know that three, the first root over here, and we wanna find out what is the left and the right of it. 
And before we actually do that, we want to look for where is this 3 inside of our traversal, of the in-order traversal over here. And when we get that information, we can easily get what's in the left and the right subtree. So in this case, it was at index 1. So essentially, we're just finding for where this value is. So we're just going to call this value mid, as we discussed. And we go to our in-order list. And we want to get the index of whatever has the value of this root. So the root has a value of pre-order and whatever is at the zero of the index. So now we got the index, okay? So we got this index mid and we got the root, okay? And this is, comes from the in-order list, perfect. So now we want to build up onto this root, right? It's going to have a left and a right subtree and we got to build onto that. Now, how exactly do we do this? We'll start off with the left subtree. So root.left. And over here, we're going to call our function recursively. So we have the function build tree, and we're going to call it over here. And remember, each time as I showed you, the no, the values, okay, the pre-order and in-order list we're actually using is going to get condensed, and it's going to change each time, okay? So what exactly is it going to change to? So for the pre-order in this case, this is the condition that we're using. So starting from the first index up to the index mid, plus one, okay? So that's gonna be for pre-order. So let me just copy it down. So we have pre-order, and we're gonna start off at the index one, and we're gonna go all the way up to mid plus one. Perfect. Now we need to get our in-order list. Now for in-order, the condition for getting everything to the left is going to be everything starting from the zeroth index up to the current index one, okay? So everything up to mid in simple words. So we have in order, and we want to get everything up to the mid index. Perfect. Okay, done. So, okay, sorry, um, it should be colon mid. Okay, so from the starting to mid, and not including mid. So this is everything to the left of root. Now we want to build everything to the right of root. So root dot right, and over here we're going to call the function on itself again. So the function is called self dot build tree, and now we want to specify what is the pre-order list that we consider in this case. So the pre-order list that we consider in this case uh, is going to be from mid plus one. So remember over here we had 20, 15, and seven, uh, seven, sorry. And that was from the mid index plus one. So one plus one. So at the second index all the way up to the ending. So that's what we're considering. So we're gonna consider pre-order. Uh, actually, I'll just copy it down. So we have the pre-order and we start off at mid plus one, and we go all the way to the ending. Now we need to have our in order list. So in order, and what is the condition over here? So that's pretty simple. We don't want to consider the whatever's at the index of mid, but everything after that. So that's going to be everything from mid plus one, all the way to the ending. Okay. So now we, by the end of this, each time we're going to be recursively calling the left and the right values. Uh, but at the very ending of this, we're going to actually return our root. Okay, so that's perfect. Now we need to have a small breakout condition. So wh wh what exactly is going to be kind of like the breakout condition in this case? So one thing to actually, sorry, one way to look at it is we're going to reach a point where each time uh, we're breaking down our pre-order and in-order list. And at one point, they're both going to be empty. And when they both are empty, we're just going to return none, right? And that just means that we're not considering it. So the way you can think of this is first we go to three and at three, we're going, we're kind of splitting up into two directions. So we're building root dot left and root dot right. And when we're building root dot right, we go further in depth. So we go root dot left, we're at 15 and then we build that up. And when we build that 15 up, we return that value, right? And then we go to 20 and then we do root dot right. And we build a seven and we build up that value. So that's how it works recursively. And each time we're going into a smaller part of it. So like I said, now we need to have that one condition to kind of break out of it. And that condition is going to be if not pre-order. So if the pre-order list is empty and not post-order, sorry, in order. So if both of the lists over here are empty. And in that case, we're just going to return none. So let's submit this and this should get accepted. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys and hopefully this video did help you out.